Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. We're back talking about antique bottles. Now, apologies to anyone that subscribed to my channel to find out a lot more about bottles because it's been 12 months since I've done a bottle video uh, and I've been threatening to get back into it and now's the time. Now, this is part five in a series about antique bottles. Um, just uh, it's not really recycling as such but it fits under the umbrella of my recycling channel partly because these bottles were all originally discarded as rubbish and uh, for the last 30 40 or even perhaps 50 years they've been recovered from various places from digging from uh, yeah, underwater in lakes and rivers and under buildings and the co collecting of antique bottles has become quite a big hobby over the last half a century and basically we're selving, salvaging rubbish from previous generations for the historical interest and some of the rarer ones are bringing pretty good money so it's been 12 months since I've done a bottle video uh, apologies again to all the bottle fanatics that wanted to find out more I promise I'll try and continue these regularly um, and in the meantime you've put up with lots of worm and compost videos and upcycling projects and repairs and restorations and all the other things I do on my channel and I like to keep my channel interesting so what I've done here with these bottles is I've arranged them into groups and this being part five we're going to look at base marks now previously we've looked at uh, dating bottles from the mid 1800s these black ones uh, right through 1900s and as the bottle manufacturing technology evolved we've followed that right through to about the 1960s where you're seeing ceramic label bottles so we've covered that in previous videos we've looked at the tops the types of enclosures so and that's an important clue in dating them and now we're going to look at the bases which is a really again an important um, aspect to dating a bottle and establishing where it's from so i'll go through these groups one at a time and we'll just look at what you're likely to find as far as Australian found antique bottles uh, the common base marks what they mean and uh, we won't get too involved because Australia especially back in the late 1800s when they started making glass bottles Australia had hundreds and hundreds of different manufacturers start up some only went for a few years but there literally is so many of them and most of them did not mark their bottles so some bottles we'll never know exactly where they're made but as I said we can date them from other uh, other manufacturing techniques and shapes of the bottles and that sort of stuff but earlier on let's start on this row here earlier on finding old bottles in Australia these are all going to be imported bottles this one dates to the 1850s it's sort of a goldfields black um, there's no base mark as such except the crudeness as you saw there just the way it was made these would have been brought out from England probably this one's about 1860s still got a label on it and you can see that one's got like a pimple in the middle um, it's got a couple of numbers but it would probably have come from an English glass manufacturer a lot of these beers were imported originally and they've got a deep kick up in the base but there's no marks usually so we're not going to be able to establish where these were actually made other than they're most likely imported this one could be later 1800s maybe even in the 1900s not quite perhaps it it's possible it was made in australia it could have been made anywhere really and there's no marks on it some of the earlier ones you can actually see made in japan once you get into the early 1900s and i've also had cod bottles these marble ones with belgium written on the base so they did come from all over the world and ended up in Australia so these ones here you can see this one's got a, another sort of a slight kick up in the base no makers marks and this one's getting more into the 1900s it's a 26 ounce source and again it's just got a smooth base so you're not really going to be able to identify a glass manufacturer but we can date it which I've touched on in previous videos from the style of the top and the seams and everything else uh, this one here is a salt jar and it would have been an English bottle for sure and it just has a smooth base with a number there so you can be pretty safe to assume that most of these early ones certainly pre about 1880 
uh, were definitely imported bottles. Um, this torpedo here, oh, actually this goes with this row. So I've got these bottles here as circa 1900, um, maybe a little bit before when Australia was starting to make bottles, but these ones were still imported. Now the torpedo has a K on the base here, which was most likely Kilner Brothers, an English company. And I think all these ones actually are. So I'll show you a few marks here. If we can get a focus on these smaller prints. That one says KB Limited, so that would be Kilner Brothers Cod. And that's made for a small country Victorian town. It's quite amazing that small companies ordered bottles from pretty much the other side of the world in this time frame. Now that's quite a common Kilner Brothers mark, a fancy KB with a number. So you'll see a lot of those Kilner Brothers. They were a big company and they did export a lot of bottles. Uh, this cod bottle, again, actually just has a number on the base. And on the heel, it actually says Kilner Brothers Makers London. So pretty self-explanatory where they come from. And Kilner Brothers made bottles sent to Australia from probably the late 1800s. Uh, I don't know when they stopped. Probably probably before 1920 I'd suggest because Australia was well into making bottles then in a big way now this jar I put this in here because it hasn't got any makers marks it's just got a circle uh, and that little circle is a mark made from an injection valve to basically push it out of a molding machine uh, so that's what those little circles are and I think this one's got one as well it's quite common on jars but you can see it on bottles as well now there's also another larger circle I think it was on this one yeah so you can see there's a larger offset circle and that's called an Owens ring and uh, a guy called I think it was Michael Owens invented a automatic bottle making machine around about 1900 and that ring at the bottom is an in indicative of a bottle being made in that machine and I think they're only used up till around about 1920 so we've covered those basically foreign bottles um, and of course bottles in later times could have been brought in from overseas but in early Australian times they're your most common foreign bottles now we get into Australian companies and there's hundreds as I said and I've just got a few different ones here this one's a hot sauce bottle it's a Lee and Perrin's quite a common one and it actually says and I'm not sure if you can make it out there it says AG B and Co which would be Australian Glass Bottle Company and I think that was a Sydney glass manufacturer uh, early 1900s very crude top on it this uh, hair tonic bottle has a crown on it which was actually another Sydney bottle glass manufacturer I think it was just simply crown glass bottle works or something like that and you often I've seen a few with crowns on and this um, whiskey bottle was another Sydney manufacturer with a big triangle and I think that was Pinnacle Glassworks so a lot of these little glassworks started up and then were amalgamated into bigger ones there's another one here which was is common on Holbrook sources which just says Vulcan and I think that was Vulcan Glassworks again I think that was Sydney um, there were a lot from all around the place uh, Victoria had Melbourne Glass Bottle Works and we'll touch on that here but Victoria also had smaller ones like Mooney Valley Glassworks, which I don't have any examples of. Now this torp torpedo says uh, Melbourne Glass Bottle Works Company. Sometimes they don't have the works, they just have Melbourne Glass Bottle Company. It started in 1872. There's a, a cod bottle with it, the initials on the heel, Melbourne Glass Bottle Company. Uh, you won't find many from the 1870s. I guess they took a while to get going and maybe they didn't actually emboss the early bottles with their name. Uh, this has got it written right around the base. Melbourne Glass Bottle Works Company. Uh, so these are, I would date these around 1890 through to 1900. Once you got to 1900, they abbreviated the... Um, the symbols basically down to an M which is just probably referred to as Melbourne Bottle Works. Uh, it underwent a lot of name changes as they absorbed and amalgamated with other bottle companies. I think there was a Waterloo Bottle Company or something. There was lots of little ones that all got taken over and Melbourne Glassworks became 
bigger and bigger and eventually you'll find a lot of bottles all around Australia come from Melbourne Glassworks and these ones with the M date around about through 1900 through 1910 up until about 1915 when they changed their symbol and this is the most I oh know this is one of the probably World War One era symbol and that one's a bit hard to see but it's AGM they became Australian glass manufacturers so when the Melbourne Bottle Company set up depots in all the other cities and pretty well just became a countrywide business they certainly had a monopoly and this was their first AGM trademark and I'll draw this on a bit of paper in a minute because it's a bit hard to make out on these bottles this one's much clearer actually so it's an intertwined AGM uh, referred to as an AGM monogram and we'll just have a, a bit of paper here if I can show you exactly what it is it's a large A with a G and then an M so that looks a bit scrappy but it's just one letter over another and they used that from 1915 or 1916 through to around about 1922 now you'll see different dates if you google it there's a lot of websites give you um give you dates on all these uh symbols and some of them they vary quite a lot so we don't need to be super precise if we say that symbol is world war one through to early 20s you're going to be accurate enough now they went from that symbol to a straight line agm there we go so you could say from the early 20s and they used that through until around about 1934 again you'll see different finishing dates but pretty well the period from the 1920s into the 1930s you see straight line AGM now you also notice that bottle's got a bit of an offset circle that's the Owens ring again uh, this next one is AGM again a little bit later uh, it's got some other numbers under it as well but the straight line AGM I would put that around about 1930 just because it's a little bit more uh, uniform in its manufacture uh, this other source here is another straight line AGM quite large letters and sometimes they're very faint on the bottom of bottles but you get the hang of looking for the kind of patterns sometimes even if they're a bit worn and this last one has a AGM but it's in a bit of a curve and I have seen references to that being more in the 1930s but then again I've also seen um, the curved AGM on bottles that are clearly much cruder so I suspect a lot of these overlapped and it depends on the machinery that the various depots of Australian glass manufacturers had um, because sometimes they kept using old machines and other companies got the more recent updates so that takes you through to about 1930 and you can see the progression of cru in crudity of bottles through to about the 1930s now i should mention some other uh, states had lots of other um, companies and i don't have examples here but i can give you a little bit of an idea uh, south australia had a lot of different manufacturers and one of them uh, hendrickson i think used a h in a circle on the base of the bottles there's also a double o trademark on the base from south australia south australian glass company uh, you also see fbh which was um fb hughes and then you'll often see an a for adelaide glassworks um, similar to how you see an m for melbourne glassworks uh, in western australia you actually get a p pgw i think it is perth glassworks uh, likewise other ones in New South Wales there was a BGW which was Botany Glassworks uh, and there was some Queens would have been Queensland ones as well I'm not familiar with those but basically a lot of these companies all operated from the 1890s or thereabouts through to the early 1900s and a lot of them or pretty well all of them they either went broke or they were taken over by Australian glass manufacturers so once we get through to the 1930s um, Australian glass manufacturers actually became ACI Australian Consolidated Industries at some stage 
but they kept using an AGM mark and on this blue castor oil that mark in the middle should be pretty easy to see there it's a square A with a G in the top and an M underneath uh, so we'll draw that one in case you can't get a good focus on that a big square A with a G and an M Australian glass manufacturers often referred to as a skirt or a, I've even heard it referred to as stilts um, but it's a very very common Australian glass manufacturer symbol and by the time we get into the 30s this company was making the vast majority of bottles in Australia they probably didn't have a great deal of competition so if you find a bottle with that on it uh, often has lots of other numbers but that's the symbol you're looking for even right through into the 60s they were still using it uh, it is on there just to the right of that notch um, so most likely a bottle you dig up after the 1930s is going to have that symbol on it uh, so Australian glass manufacturers now the other numbers are going to be batch numbers um, I believe the M on little M on that one is a date code so some other letters will be date codes I don't think you need to get carried away with um, what was this one the ISM 708 they're all going to be client numbers, bottling works they came from, batch numbers, uh, an order date perhaps. It really doesn't matter. It's not going to give any uh, fluctuation to the value of a bottle. Really, we're just looking for that initial Australian glass manufacturer symbol. Uh, this big bottle I brought out here because it does show it very clearly. I'll try and turn it over without dropping it. So you can see it's a large AGM logo there. A big ISM number, I don't know what that actually stands for, but it really doesn't impact the value of the bottle. Um, so there you go. Uh, once you get into the 70s and 80s, you no longer see that. So um, it's a wide bracket of dates they used it, but and as I said, it will be one of the most common symbols you find, unless you're into older bottles, and uh, that's where you get much more interesting marks. Uh, I did put this other cod aside here. Purely to show that sometimes you get bottles with the soft drink manufacturer's initials under the base. This is FM. The bottle is F Manelic, and I think it was Francis from memory in Sananad. So some bottles do. The owners probably ordered them and wanted their initials on the base as well. So there's no bottle maker's symbol on there or on the heel. So we don't really know where that one's made. It could have been Australian, it could have been overseas. But you do have to be aware of that sometimes. I know Roland's from Ballarat also had an R on the bottom and a lot of theirs. And the big Foster's beers, I didn't bring one of those out, but they're a big tall beer bottle, a dark green one. And they have a, a large F on the bottom for Foster's. So I think we're just about finished with um, the marks you find on the base of bottles. Uh, there are other little quirky things like we had to look at this crown seal before it's got a notch on one side now I believe that was just a locator on the bottling machine for where the label goes um, it basically just orientates the bottle the right direction because these were all this one's into the 60s maybe yeah late 60s probably and uh, they were all made manufactured and filled probably running on conveyors and through various machines so I think that notch was just a an orientation thing for the machine so that the label was put on a certain side uh, you'll also see stippling on the base of some of these which is the little dots around the heel Let's see if I can find a good one here yeah you can see it on that one and this one's also got a notch uh, the stippling is a more recent um, feature and I would say probably from the 60s so any bottle you see with those little dots around the heel where it contacts the surface is not going to be earlier than the 1960s. Uh, and I believe that was for partly for friction when the bottle was moving on the conveyor. And also it did insulate the thick base of the bottle uh, if it came out of the machine being quite hot and then went onto a cold conveyor. The stippling provided a little bit of insulation to stop the temperature shock and possibly cracking the bottle. Because this one's a 1960s bottle and it still has a very thick base. So I think that's everything. Feel free to ask any questions. Um, I will be doing some more bottle videos when I get around to it. And I won't leave it 12 months, I promise. 
and I'll probably start now focusing on just discussing certain types of bottles so we might do a video on these cod bottles I'll give you a bit of history I'll do a bit of extra research and just so, so you can understand a bit more about them we'll also talk about the torpedoes at some stage and uh, I'm always open to being guided if someone wants to know about something um, shoot me a question uh, I can probably help or at least point you in the direction of someone that can I would strongly recommend if you're really keen on learning about bottles to look up the Australian Antique Bottle Forum. It's a, a fantastic resource of information. There's probably every top Australian collector on that forum. It's free to join. And uh, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of, of information about bottles, those guys, look, if they don't know it, God doesn't know it. They're, they're really switched on. Uh, I think they also have a Facebook page. I have a Facebook page if you'd like to connect with me and ask some more questions or share some photos of your bottles if you can't identify them. So you can look up The Ultimate Recycler on Facebook. Uh, but give us some comments below. Give us some feedback. And uh, if you want to know about a certain bottle you found, I should be able to help you out. Thanks for watching. Look out for me in the next video.